very oily, but this feels so nice on my skin. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel Sky Life where I explore the world of wellness and try all sorts of health and lifestyle trends and challenges. In this video I'm going to be trying Ayurvedic self care. Now Ayurveda is the world's oldest health system and it's the sister science of yoga. Ayurveda dates back thousands of years to the Vedas which are one of the world's oldest written texts. What got me really interested in Ayurveda is that it kind of encompasses all parts of health including mind, body, and soul and it's very personalized to the individual. In Ayurveda there are three different mind body types which they call the doshas and by knowing which dosha you tend to lean towards you can then structure your health around this including what you eat and how you exercise, your skincare routine, your sleep schedule, all of these things are all encompassed in Ayurveda. So I'm going to be meeting with Sahara Rose who is an Ayurvedic expert and she is going to tell me more about Ayurveda. I'm going to find out which dosha I am and then she will guide me in how I can structure a self-care routine for this week to help balance my dosha. The word Ayurveda literally means the knowledge of life. In order to be truly healthy, you must have knowledge of all areas of your life from nutrition to digestion to self-care to even lifestyle practices. All of these are encompassed in Ayurveda. Ayurvedic self-care is really unique and beautiful because it is holistic, it is natural, and it is also reflective of what that individual needs. In the Vedas, they say, as is the microcosm, so is the macrocosm. And essentially that means that we reflect the universe around us. The word dosha means energy in Sanskrit. So there are three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha. I like to just call them by the elements that they're the highest in. So vata, air, pitta, fire, kapha, earth. So we are all a combination of these three doshas, but in varying amounts. So some of of us have naturally more air in our minds, more air in our bodies. What that looks like mentally is creative, able to look at the big picture, quickly moving, but on the other side can be anxious, suffering from insomnia. And then physically, if you have a lot of air in your stomach, that feels like bloating, gas, constipation, cracking joints. Think literally what would air look like and that's how you find vata. Pitta is fire. So fire in the personality is someone who is strong, determined, goal-oriented, ambitious, hardworking. But the flip side of that is sometimes you can be impatient. You may not allow flow and for the universe to control things because as you know, we don't always know what can be best for us. Now physically, pitta, fire in the body is a fast metabolism, fast digestion. You may have a really strong appetite. You tend to feel hot very easily. You may sweat a lot, oily skin, oily hair, and overall just a tendency to be on the more fiery side. And then we we have kapha. Kapha is the earth dosha. So people with a lot of earth in their mind, they're very calm, they're peaceful, they're sweet, they're genuine, loyal. They're that grandmother energy, as I like to call it. They're the people who always are making sure everyone else around them is okay. But sometimes what can happen is you're constantly holding space for other people that you don't put your own self-care and boundaries first. Now physically in the body, kapha is heavy. So with the earthiness, you can feel stuck. You can feel really grounded, sluggish, weight gain, sluggish metabolism, not able to get up and do all the things that you need to do. And that's when you need more stimulation. We can look at these doshas within us and see what can we do to bring that dosha back into balance. In order to find out my dosha, I took Sahara's online quiz that asked me questions about both my physical body and my personality. The results showed that I am 71% pitta in the mind and 75% pitta in the body. So you are a pitta. So pitta tends to have more oily prone skin, tends to have tendencies towards rashes, hives, irritations, and just super sensitive skin. I don't know if you've noticed, is your skin very sensitive? It is very sensitive. I can have some redness in my skin, a lot of redness actually. So with the Ayurvedic skincare specifically, you wanna be doing coconut oil. Coconut oil is the most cooling oil, so it's not going to clog up your pores the same way that sesame oil would. That would be a better one for vata. Rose is another wonderful ingredient for pitta. It's very 
sweet. It's very great for sensitive skin. It's very cleansing. I love just doing a rose water toner. Mm. Just having that just to really just like hydrate and replenish your skin. And then if you're exfoliating your skin, like doing something like a sugar scrub or a salt scrub just to help remove the dead skin cells is going to be really, really great for Pitta. Your skin is a reflection of your gut. So just notice like what is my skin telling me and how can I adjust my diet and my lifestyle to serve my skin as well. I definitely definitely related to the symptoms of a pitta imbalance and hope that this week of self-care will help me slow down a little bit and let go of some of the pitta aggression I hold on to. Sorry if this is TMI, but I just got my period and whenever that happens, I always break out. I really hope that this Ayurvedic skincare and self-care routine this week will help my skin clear up. For my Ayurvedic skincare routine, I followed Sahara's recommendation to use rose, which is great for Pitta skin. I started with a gentle rose foaming cleanser, followed by a rose water spritz as a hydrating toner, and then a rose hip oil serum for a moisturizer. I then used my crystal face roller to give myself a lovely face massage before going to bed nice and early. Seven hours later. Later. So now I'm about to do my Ayurvedic morning routine and that involves a lot of tongue scraping, so let's go do that. Tongue scraping is something I recommend everyone on this planet do because it will take like nine seconds of your life. You take the tongue scraper, you scrape your tongue about 10 times. You don't want to just do it two times, you want to do 10 times. And essentially you're removing the white mucus. This is called ama. And this white mucus is our toxins. Our tongue is a direct reflection of our digestion. Now the next thing I love doing after tongue scraping is oil pulling. Oil pulling is essentially Ayurvedic mouthwash. All you do is you take a spoon of oil. Again, sesame oil is really good for vata. Coconut oil is really good for pitta. Grapeseed oil, mustard seed oil is really good for kapha. Kind of swish it around your mouth. You can do it anywhere from one minute, working your way up towards ideally 20 minutes. It does not have to be 20 minutes, but that's just sort of the, the optimal way that you can do it. And what it does is it removes the bad bacteria without damaging the good bacteria. Even though this was a little annoying to deal with having to swish around all this oil for an extended amount of time, oil pulling is super effective and made my mouth feel really fresh and clean. It is nearing 1 a.m. I'm dropping a bunch of footage that I need to edit. Now, normally I feel like I would just stay up and work on some editing tonight what I would normally do in one of these situations as a pitta dosha is I would just plow through it. I'd stay up late. I would probably then get even more frustrated and end up spiraling into an aggressive state of being from lack of sleep or something. So instead of doing that, I think I'm going to choose to go to bed now, wake up early with a clear mind and go from there. Makeup is off, rose oil on my face. I'm about to pass out. I don't have the energy to do a face roller tonight. So I'm going to sleep. I'm glad that I'm making this decision to go to bed instead of to stay up. I feel like this is the balanced self-care decision that I should be making, so good night. A huge part of Ayurveda is nutrition, which affects everything in our lives from our skin to our mental health. During my week of self-care, I was simultaneously trying Ayurvedic nutrition and also noticing benefits from eating to balance my dosha. I decided to make an Ayurvedic golden milk from Sahara's cookbook to enhance my evening self-care routine. Yummy. I'm having a little spa night tonight. Then it was time to try dry brushing and abhyanga, or self-oil massage. Now with a dry brush, you scrub your skin the same way that you would in the shower, but when it's dry. And the reason why you're doing that is because when your skin is dry, you're able to essentially flake off the dead skin cells, whereas when your skin is wet, it sticks together. Abhyanga is self-oil massage. Oil is such a big part of Ayurvedic self-care that the word for oil in Sanskrit, sneha, is the same word as the word for love. Abhyanga was my favorite part of the entire week. 
Even though I feel like I was getting coconut oil everywhere, this act of taking the time to massage my own body and provide it with some love was so nice and a great way to wind down before bed. At the end of the week, I decided to go all out and put on a matcha mud mask and take a lavender bubble bath, which isn't necessarily part of traditional Ayurveda, but something I love to do about once a week as part of my normal self-care routine. My week of Ayurvedic self-care has been so absolutely lovely. I'm definitely going to continue some of these self-care practices, especially oil pulling and tongue scraping and abhyanga. That practice is just so beautiful and luxurious and I truly feel like I've benefited in so many ways from incorporating Ayurvedic self-care into my life this week. I feel like my skin totally is looking vibrant and healthy and I definitely feel the benefits mentally as well. I've just felt a lot less stressed more grounded, more at ease. It's like the edge has been taken off a little bit and I feel really connected to myself. I really loved learning about Ayurveda. I want to learn more about it and possibly make even more videos about this. So if that's something that you would like to see, please give this video a big thumbs up, comment below, let me know what you thought. And also, if you want to find out what dosha you are, you can take Sahara's online quiz. I put a link in the video description so you can find out your mind body type. Okay, that is it for this this episode of Skylight, thank you so much for watching and remember you have the power to thrive, you have the power to live your best life ever. Give yourself some self care this week, I'm telling you it does a world of difference on the minds. And thank you so much for watching, I will see you next week, bye!